ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Jackwitz. This is the Cage Review, and this is my review for X Men Days of Future Past. Directed by Brian Singer. They finally got Brian Singer back into the franchise, and he tried to do a lot with this movie to undo some of the things that were done in prior movies. This has a huge cast to it, so I'm going to try to run through the cast as quickly as I can. You have Hugh Jackman as Logan Wolverine, James McAvoy, and Patrick Stewart as young and old Charles Xavier, Professor X, respectively. Michael Fassbender and Ian McKellen as young and old Eric Lancher, or Magneto, respectively. Jennifer Lawrence as Raven Darkholm Mystique. You have Halle Berry as Aurora Monroe Storm. Nicholas Holt as Hank McCoy Beast. You have Anna Paquin as Marie Diancanto Rogue. You have Ellen Page as Catherine Kitty Pride. You have Peter Dinklage as Bolivar Trask, and I really love Peter Dinklage in this movie. Peter Dinklage just has this excellence in acting that very few actors have. Everything he does, he has a certain approach to, and it is just excellence every time. That being said, Sean Ashmore is Bobby Drake, Iceman. Evan Peters is Peter Maximoff, Quicksilver. Omar Sy is Lucas Bishop. You have Daniel Cudmore as Peter Rasputin or Colossus. Ben Bingbing as Clarice Ferguson, Blink. Boo Boo Stewart, I couldn't make that up if I tried, as James Proudstar, Warpath. Aiden Kanto as Roberto De Costa Sunspot. Let me keep going here. It's, I told you it's a big ass cast. Lucas Till as Alex Summers Havoc. Evan Dungkite as Mortimer Tunaby uh, Toad. Josh Hellman as Major William Stryker. Mark Camacho, who does a very good job playing President Richard Nixon. And so, the premise here is that now you have these things that are out. Hunting the X-Men. Uh, if you know anything about the X-Men franchise, the Sentinels. Uh, so, you know, the Sentinels have been a very big pain in the ass throughout the history of the X-Men. And so this, it really starts out with, in the future, you have a war with these Sentinels that can mutate to match whatever they're being attacked with. So if Iceman is trying to freeze one of them, it can become incredibly hot to adjust to that or they can turn their skin to, like, a, a metal alloy. Um, and this all happens because Bolivar Twask uh, gets a hold of Mystique and tests on her and gets her DNA, and so he's able to create these Sentinels of the future. And so anytime these Sentinels would hunt a group of the X-Men, uh, Kitty Pride would send... Um, who was... It? Oh, man, it was um, Bishop... She would send Bishop's consciousness back into his uh, past self. And so he would be able to warn the X-Men that these Sentinels are coming and where they were coming so they wouldn't be there. And so Professor X and Magneto, who are now friends fighting this common enemy, are coming up with this idea to send their consciousness back in time, but they can't survive the trip. And so what they do is they send Wolverine back in time to warn uh, younger Professor X and younger Magneto uh, what's happening and to try to stop Mystique from killing Bolivar Trask, which is what, in essence, starts the humans wanting to hunt the mutants. And so they send Wolverine back in time, and there was a lot of really great things that happened with this. But one of the biggest things that happened that I just absolutely loved is there is a scene in there where <laughs> they have to free Magneto from the Pentagon. He's in a jail, in a prison, underneath the Pentagon, like way underneath. And so they get Quicksilver, played by Evan Peters, who just killed this role, man. It, he was absolutely phenomenal. And they break him out of the cell, and there's this scene, and they're in a room with a bunch of guards, and they do this quick time motion thing with Quicksilver, where he's running around the room, literally around the walls, and he's, um, He's like taking out all these guards one at a time, and it was just great. You have to see it to know what I'm talking about. But you also have other moments in this movie that were just pure acting ability and emotion. Uh, one instance is, at one point, uh, you find out that Professor X, his younger self, uh, he doesn't have his powers. He's taking this serum that Hank McCoy made uh, that stifles his powers so he doesn't have to hear the voices, and he can also walk. Uh, but he, you know, he's almost a junkie with this serum, and he's very jaded, and he's kind of at that crossroads in his life. And so there's this scene where Wolverine has Professor X look through Wolverine's mind to find the older Professor X, and it was a really great face-off conversation between 
James McAvoy and Patrick Stewart uh, that really sold very well and it was just so impactful. Uh, it was so well done. And so that's like what I loved about this movie. Like you get the relationship again between Professor X and Magneto, but you also get the dynamic of the younger versus older Professor X himself and how he's fighting himself. You know, I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And so the big thing here is they do have to stop Mystique uh, from killing Bolivar Trask. That sets off the humans. And so there's this thing where they're trying to convince Mystique to do the right thing. And Professor X was struggling not controlling her, letting her make the decision, but knowing what that could cost everybody. And so it was, it was very well done all the way around. The acting was top notch. Go figure. The story was very, very, very good. I really loved this story. It was well thought out. The action sequences were absolutely phenomenal. The CGI looked really good. Everything about this movie was pretty much the best thing they've done in the X-Men series so far, in my opinion. So at the end of the day, they do convince Mystique. She does not kill Bolivar Trask. It does change future events. And so the Sentinels don't even exist. There's a lot of mutants who died in the other timeline that are alive now. So you get cameos from Kelsey Grammer as older Hank McCoy Beast, James Marsden as Cyclops, Jean Grey shows up as Jean Grey, or I'm, I'm sorry, Famke Jensen shows up as Jean Grey. So it was really cool, man. Uh, there were two versions of this movie, the theatrical release, where they cut a lot of Anna Paquin's Rogue out of the movie. Uh, I don't know what the decision process was there, but they just decided to scrap a lot of Rogue's part. And so I saw both movies and I thought they were both very very well done very well done um, so at the end of the day I was super happy with this I give it an eight and a half out of ten just a thrill ride all the way through you also get an end credit scene where you see a mutant putting together the pyramids in Egypt and a bunch of people worshiping him it turns out to be apocalypse which leads into of course X-Men apocalypse um, but very good man I absolutely love this movie so eight and a half out of ten let me know what you think in the comments below if you enjoyed this Hit the like button, subscribe, and share. My name is Kevin Jackowitz, Cage Nation, out.